What's up everyone? This is King Crypto and today I want to talk about Bitcoin compared to gold and how easy it would be for Bitcoin's price to triple if these set of circumstances arose. Now I just want to shout out my subscribers by saying thank you so much for watching all my videos uh, this week. I have been hard at work and I know I haven't always been the most consistent YouTuber but I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for making it possible for me to get 32,000 subscribers. I hope I can keep pushing the envelope and grow as my content gets better as well. And if you feel like my content is getting better, please subscribe, at least like the video and comment towards the end of the video to tell me what you think about the end because it's a little bit different than this topic. So Bitcoin could take a major chunk of change from gold. And this is what this one crypto expert says, Gabar Gerbix. I think I'm saying his name right. Uh, and this guy is actually the director of digital asset strategies at Vanerk MVIS. Now it's interesting to note that gold has around $7 trillion worth outstanding right now. I didn't even know it was that much. And if you compare Bitcoin, Bitcoin's market cap is $128 billion. Now that's very impressive, but I believe the most the richest man in the world, uh, Jeff Bezos, has I believe it's 150 billion dollars is net worth. So the, one man has more money than the total Bitcoin market cap. So I think you get my drift when I'm saying it's it's not within or it is in in the realm of possibility that Bitcoin's price could spike yet again, and this is used as a de-risk asset, uh, as uh, Gabar was explaining. Bitcoin is used for some investors as a way to hedge or leverage their risk from other investments in stocks. It's kind of a reactionary asset class, kind of like gold. Whenever the markets are a little choppy or things start coming down, what happens is gold tends to go up because it means that people are losing faith in the dollar or the economy in general. So Bitcoin kind of has some similar tendencies. So if we took 5 to 10% of people, right, that are invested in gold right now and they wanted some digital gold instead, that would up the price of Bitcoin by three times the amount. That would be a price of around I guess 23,000 right now, which would be really cool to see first of all which is absolutely going to happen, I believe. Maybe not in a few months, but that's a different topic. Now, the thing with gold is that it's a physical thing, right? But Bitcoin is more than just gold. Not only is it used for this reactionary purpose for some of the more traditional investors, but it's also used as a real medium of exchange. We can treat Bitcoin like digital gold, but it can also be treated as a payment to someone in a different country. And there's plenty other situations where you can use Bitcoin like that instantly without signing up to some website where they have your data and everything they know about you, right? So it, it's nice. Anyway, let's hear him talk about this topic. This is this is Brian Stutlin here. A quick, quick question for you uh, on where Bitcoin is going. You know, your case to the upside here. But is Bitcoin becoming more of a fair trade, so to speak, replicating volatility in the market? I touched on this a couple months ago on how Bitcoin seems to pre be predicting future volatility in the market as more of a fair trade, people as a safe haven move in the market. Is this where the market is shifting to for cryptocurrency into a way to play fear to the upside rather than an investable product? Look, yeah, uh, so Bitcoin is used as digital gold today. It's a, it's a de-risk uh, asset. Basically, if someone wants to outlay systematic risk, then one would go to assets uh, like gold or digital gold, Bitcoin. And uh, investors are looking at uncorrelated uh, assets to their portfolios. So I would say uh, for, uh, as a message to uh, investors, Bitcoin is uh, due to it's a safe haven asset or digital gold and one third trades like a tech stock. So that part of the video is kind of like a highlight of the whole clip. However, Brian also talked about a trade he wants to make in August with Bitcoin futures where he's betting that the 8,000 price point will probably hit. And I agree with that. I think we'll see 
Bitcoin go up to as much as 8,000 and hopefully not correct. But like I said, watch my August 10th vid if you want to have more context on that. And that could be from August 10th to the 16th. I keep hearing that date a lot too. So if you want to know what that's all about, click on the link. Well, Bitcoin hold 7,000. So 153 people voted and the majority said yes. So hopefully these people own it and they don't sell it. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> but uh, that's about it. So I'm going to go on to the next segment. If you want to win some Litecoin, stick around to that segment and tell me your thoughts. All right, now we're going to talk about iChain or ITC. It is involved with Internet of Things. It is a token and it, they, they have their own software where they're trying to implement this technology on all sorts of Internet of Things applications, trying to make your life a lot easier in the process. Full disclosure, this was a paid for explanation of some additional aspects of IaChain. I have talked about IaChain before and to me they seem like a very uh, reputable company. To win the Litecoin today, I'd like to know do you think that IaChain, not IaChain, do you think that my sponsored ad should come right after the main segment of my videos or should I separate them? Because I noticed that my subscribers weren't engaging when I would separate them because it's so new or it's just a topic that a lot of people just don't know about or not interested in. So please give me a good comment about that and whoever does can win the Litecoin for the next video. Anyway, IaChain is... I'll try to condense what it is in one sentence. iChain doesn't exist as a pure blockchain, by the way, but as a hybrid of directed acyclic graphs, or DAG. And these are subsets combined with the blockchain. So DAG essentially works by doing away with proof of work blocks by having transactions verify each other, allowing iChain to be highly scalable, transactions in milliseconds. So it's a pretty pretty fast blockchain technology because they're using the best of both worlds. Uh, if you want to know more about DAG, I would suggest to just research it because it's a little complicated. But it's capable of scaling from 1,000 to 10,000 transactions per second. So that's pretty cool. And it also, obviously, since it's on the blockchain and DAG combined, it makes it really hard to hack or to compromise, especially with their chips in play. They're starting to create chips for unique ID users, and this makes it even harder for hacks or compromise, compromising data in general because it's on the blockchain. And even if someone were to hack, their unique ID is on is on the blockchain, so you know exactly who did it because everyone only gets one. So I'm sure this can be abused if I a chain can live up to the the hype, but I just wanted to point that out there. So here's some problems with the centralized system so far. Unlike data assets, digital assets can be transferred. If I send you Bitcoin, I no longer have the Bitcoin and you do. But data assets are different because data can be overwritten and difficult to transfer effectively. So that's a problem. But with with IAT chain, rough chains, you know, uh, there's a lot of these Internet of Things blockchain coming out <laughs> that sounded really grammatically incorrect but a lot of them are coming out and they kind of serve the same function like the more that you put more data that is tied to them just increases and becomes more valuable likewise with connected internet of things devices as long as they're operating they're creating more data the value of data assets is reflected in use that's an interesting thing because data doesn't necessarily mean that it's useful What's useful are statistics, right? Like location. Like Trump's inauguration versus the Women's March. Measuring how many devices were out that day. And it gives you an idea of how many people were at each one. But there's some things like that are completely useless. So data assets can be only usable when it's worth something. And then if it's worth something, then it means that the person is worth something and they never got their cut. So therefore data assets should be assets that belong to users go growing and constantly generating value. Oh boy here we go here we go. Better get rid of all this stuff sorry guys. Okay. 
ultimately this is not the status quo because most markets control the data asset market that are centralized and the blockchain really can solve that problem distributed identity versus centralized identity is probably the biggest one centralized identity is the big reason why our personal information is compromised so much because it forces you to sign in with your name with your date of birth uh, social security number for certain financial signups all that kind of stuff and all it takes the the administrators can see all of this Mark Zuckerberg knows if he wanted he could find out something about all of us right everything we've ever said on Facebook and that connects to Instagram so you get the picture and hackers can easily find out things about you because of that too and a distributed identity no login or password is required and the only thing that is controllable is the private key well you get your private key and that's it so it's way easier to be protected in that particular case and in a centralized identity we can see that you know this topic of privacy is absolutely getting more and more serious as the years go by because we know I, th I would hope anyone that's awake and aware knows that there are many companies that are benefiting off of our information and we're not getting anything out of it yet being compromised constantly so that's what the blockchain could solve in this case and I think that is very important to understand so that's essentially that if you guys want to read these articles or follow iChain, that will be in the description. And I hope you enjoyed this explanation of what iChain is all about. Stick around for my next video tomorrow. Uh, hopefully I'll find something good to talk about. Maybe some juicy crypto news. But whatever the case is, I will be back and I will be stronger than ever. Alright, let's get cryptical.